I grew up in a small village in Kachinlan. My parents were teachers and I was the eldest of seven siblings. On the 25th of April, 1976, the military came and our lives changed forever. We will never forget that day. We had to flee to our village and headed to the town of Nijina. We hid from the military for weeks. It was terrifying. When I was 12, the police seized rice bag from me, saying that we were not allowed to take it from one place to another as part of the full cut policy. I was so angry. I wasn't thinking clearly. I snatched the rice bag and ran away with my sisters following me. I realized I couldn't live with this injustice. My parents used to say, we have nothing else to give you but education. All of us graduated from university, which was very rare for the family then. When I study for my history degree, I also work in the municipal government to support my family. In 1988, there were uprisings in Yango. The violence was shocking. I tried to participate, but I had to support my family. When the students fled for the jungle, I gave them almost all the money I had. After graduating, I moved to the remote kitchen village and opened kindergarten. I wanted to focus my energy on my people. It felt good to follow in the footsteps of my parents. But then, the military and large companies came to the village and began taking our land, clearing it for their own profit. They pushed people into landless poverty. I began to confront them. I knew my rights from the working at the municipal government in Yangon. I knew that they shouldn't do this. I quickly gained a reputation as a troublemaker. The police were always trying to catch me. I was lucky. I managed to escape them many times, but I had to move around carefully, often in disguise. It was scary, but also quite exciting. Finally, we managed to put one of the large companies on trial and they agreed to give some compensation for villagers who have been displaced. Winning that case gave me strength to go forward. The company agreed to build a school and hospital for the village as compensation for all the misery they had caused. They built the school, but the hospital has never been built. In 2010, I decided to run for the elections. I had loads of support among the rural communities. My opponent in the elections was a former military general. He was a very powerful man and it was clear that his campaign was corrupt, so I filed a case against him for election fraud. That was an important but dangerous move. The general and the company wanted me arrested by any means and they finally got their way. I had tried to help a sick man in the village. There were no doctors in the area and my family had often helped the sick. <laughs> But the man sadly died. I was arrested for this old case and charged for administrating medicine without a license. I was in prison for six months and witnessed a lot of brutality. Many of people in the prison had not received a proper trial. There was tremendous injustice. I began to fight the prison authority for better condition for the inmates. In 2014, I was lucky to be released on lack of evidence. I decided to keep fighting for the land rights. I was prepared that I may get in trouble again because I realized that if I didn't take it up this struggle, many people would suffer. If we lose our land, we lose everything. We have been living here for years and years, but the Kachim people traditionally have never registered their land. We were unaware of the legal structures, so the government and companies exploit this because if we have no documents, it is not your land. I work with local people to help them to do this, but I also fight the government so that they recognize the traditional custom of land ownership. 
This work can be a lonely existence, but I have made a choice to dedicate my life to this cause. For decades, there has been fighting and suffering among my people. We have been left behind in every sector, the economy, health, social policies, and especially education. This is the impact of war. But the ceasefire alone is not enough to bring the peace that we desire. Without our land, there will be no peace.